Hey guys, welcome back to Simplify Mechanic. My name's Thomas. In today's video, in today's video, I'm gonna give you 10 reasons why you shouldn't be a mobile mechanic. So if you're thinking about starting a mobile mechanic business, you need to stay tuned because this video just might change your mind. Hey guys, how you feeling? You feeling good mentally? You feeling good physically? That's good to hear, guys. So today, I'm gonna tell you why you shouldn't be a mobile mechanic. Because a lot of people watch these videos and they're like, oh man, I bet it's great being a mobile mechanic, owning your own business. Well, it's not all fun and games. There's a lot of cons to having this mobile mechanic business. Here's the top 10 reasons that you shouldn't be a mobile mechanic. Starting with number one, very simple, it's hard. It's hard as shit. You better have some discipline in you to do this. If you're somebody that doesn't have discipline, catching yourself cut corners a lot, calling off work a lot, or just slacking, then you should not do this because the only way to be successful in this mobile mechanic business, to work long, hard hours. Just because you can set your own schedule doesn't mean you work less than what you did when you worked for somebody else. Actually, you need to work more because it is completely up to you to make this work. It is up to you to put the hours in. It is up to you to make the calls, set the appointments, keep the appointments. It's up to you to have the time management skills. Make sure you're getting everything done in an efficient manner so you can move on to the next one. So you can't just come in here and half-ass it. Cause like they say, you can't half-ass butt fuck it. We're at number two. The second reason you shouldn't be a mobile mechanic it's confusing. It's confusing as hell. It's not as easy as just saying, I want to be a mobile mechanic. There's a lot of things you got to do before you can even start. And every state is different. We're talking about you have to make sure you're LLC'd or you're S Core, C Core, a sole proprietor. You got to check with the clerk of courts. You got to see if you got to have a business license or if it's a vendor's license. Contact the IRS. You get a tax ID number. Then you got to figure out what kind of insurance you have. And to insure a mobile mechanic business is very tricky because you're using your car as part of your business. So do you need commercial auto or do you need general liability? Then you have to figure out how you're gonna take payments. Are you just gonna do cash? Are you gonna do the apps like Cash App, PayPal, Square, Venmo, Zelle? Are you gonna do invoices? Are you gonna pay to have a credit card machine? These are all things you gotta think about. This is just me thinking off the top of the dome right now. There's a lot more shit that goes into it than just that. So it is very confusing. If you're not ready to invest the time to actually start your mobile mechanic business the right way and the legal way, then stop right here. Don't waste your money, don't waste your time. And number three is no respect. As a mobile mechanic, nobody respects you. Other mechanics don't respect you. The customers don't respect you. They don't look at you as a true mechanic. They don't look at your business as a real business. They're looking at you like you're some half-assed mechanic. And that's why when you go there, you go do these jobs and you tell them $200, nobody's just gonna say, okay, and give you the money. Every single time somebody's gonna say, oh, that's expensive. How about 150? And they'll do that every time. But if they walked into a dealership and the dealership said $200, you think they're gonna say, well, I don't know. How about 150? No, they wouldn't. They would simply pay the person. No matter what you think and you know that it is real business, I am a real mechanic, nobody else out there is going to treat you like that. They look at you like you're just the cousin next door working on the car. All right, here we are at number four, and it kind of plays off number three of no respect. So number four is the stigma. People think mobile mechanics cut corners. They think you do cheap work. The stigma is there for a reason. The stereotype exists for a reason because a lot of times it's true. I would say half of the mobile mechanics out there are drug addicts, just being real with you. Here in Columbus, Ohio, a lot of the other mobile mechanics I run into are straight up fucking crackheads. And what they're doing is getting half the money up front, disappearing, going to get high, and not ever coming back. And because there's a lot of people like that, that stigma is on all mobile mechanics. And then you'll have these customers just looking at you like you're a total piece of shit. And a lot of times they'll say, please don't rip me off or you're really going to fix my car, right? You know how that makes you feel? Do you think them customers would ask a dealership mechanic that? Do you think they're going to go to the dealer and say, now you sure you know what you're doing, right? You're not going to steal my money. No, they would not ever say that but they'll say it to the mobile mechanic every day. Real quick, before we get started on number five, man, it's a beautiful day, 65 degrees. It'd be a perfect day to work. The problem is these days are few and far between, and that's where number five comes in, weather. Weather is so important, and it's something that you've probably never thought about being a dealership mechanic or being a shop mechanic. When has it ever bothered you if it's snowing outside or raining? 
It doesn't. You're inside working. The only time it bothers you is when you go outside to smoke or when you're driving to and from work. Well, guess what? You're pretty much going to be a meteorologist if you're going to be doing this job. You're going to have a weather app. You're going to be checking the weather channel. And not just the day. You're going to be breaking it down by the hour. Say it's going to be 25 degrees tomorrow with three inches of snow. Snow is falling from noon to 6 p.m. Well, you still have to work. If you don't work, just when it rains and snows or when it's cold, this business is gonna fail. You might as well not even try. If it's raining from noon to six, guess what? You need to schedule your job at 10 a.m. You can't just go out there and wing it. You go out here and wing it, you're gonna go out here. It's gonna be 65 degrees now. Tomorrow will be four or five inches of snow. That's no bullshit. It happens all the time. So you gotta be prepared for all this. So get ready to be the weatherman because the weather is the number one enemy you have in this business. All right, here we are moving right along. Number six, there's no backup. There's nobody else. You, you are the company. You are the CEO, you are the CFO, you are the secretary, you're the nurse, you're the janitor, your accounting, your customer service. You have to wear all the hats. And trust me, it is very hard to keep it all together. Here you're a lawyer for your company one time, trying to figure out how to get mechanic liens, how to get the right paperwork. Now here you're customer service, you're on the phone, listening to somebody gripe because their car broke down that you worked on eight months ago, and somehow they're blaming it on you. And you're sitting there just listening to it. After that, now you're part of accounting. You're out here trying to take payments. People out here are paying with $20 cash, the rest on a debit card, the rest on a different credit card. They're holding up James Wilkins credit card. The woman's name's Cindy. You're like, well, whose card is this? Do you accept it or not? So you gotta put your legal hat back on. Is it legal for me to accept this? You finally get to be the mechanic. Now you're diagnosing the vehicle. You get it finally diagnosed. Now you gotta play AutoZone. So here you are calling around trying to find these parts. You know in your heart of hearts who you are as a person. You know if you're a quick learner or if you work hard. You know if you cut corners and you're like, oh, I don't really learn too fast. It's gonna be hard for me. And that's okay. This job isn't for everyone. It's not always greener on the other side. Trust me on that. Jump into one of my favorite, number seven, shitty customers. It's just part of it, man. You're gonna have, on average, more shitty customers than they deal with at dealerships. Why? Because when you're starting out, your labor rate is not gonna be too high. Right now, I'm at $100 an hour. When I started off, I was at $60 an hour. When the shop and dealership are at 120 and above, you're at half price. So they're gonna be older vehicles. Well, guess what? I hate saying this, but a lot of times with these older vehicles, the customers that drive these vehicles have less manners. It's just that simple. This ain't everybody. I have a lot of great customers. But on average, you're gonna run into customers who treat you like complete shit. You're gonna be working in a lot of apartment complexes. You're gonna be working on a lot of street dudes' cars. You're gonna be working on a single mom's cars. You're gonna be working on people that are struggling with alcoholism and drug addiction. And these customers are gonna try to not pay you. They're gonna agree to a price. Then they're not gonna try to pay you in the back end. Like I said, they don't look at you as a real business. They're gonna try to get you to do more work for free. You're gonna give them a quote on a starter and you're gonna start replacing that. Then they're gonna come out and say, hey, can you do this for me real quick? You're gonna have to say, no, I can't do that right now. Or yes, I can, but it's gonna be an additional $100. Don't just do anything for free because these people will take advantage of you. They spend more energy trying to figure out a way how not to pay you than they do trying to find a job. So if you don't have the patience to deal with all that shit, don't even try it, man. I'm telling you, don't even try it. Number eight is your safety. You're going to be put in a lot of situations where you're not going to feel safe because you're not safe. You're going to be taking calls at noon. You're going to be taking calls at 4 p.m. You'll be taking calls at 11 p.m. Especially when you're first starting out. You got to take all these calls because if not, your business will fail. 80% of businesses fail in the first two years. And a mobile mechanic business is no different. Especially if you live in a big city like I do in Columbus, Ohio, there's a million people. There's a bunch of drugs, there's a bunch of gangs, there's just a bunch of bad people out there, right? I'm not some super badass or anything like that, but I spent half my life in the Marine Corps. I've been to war numerous times. I have Purple Heart, Combat Action Ribbon. I've been to combat, so I've been into situations a lot of people haven't. I'm also 280 pounds, so I'm not the easiest target. But guess what? I'm still scared out there. I still feel vulnerable. So if you're 22 years old, never even left your hometown, you weigh 140 pounds, you best believe you're gonna feel it. But there's always something that's the equalizer to everything. If you don't believe in your Second Amendment rights, you might wanna start to, because this right here, you have to carry, is what's gonna keep you alive. Because if any situation pops off, doesn't matter how much you weigh, 
only takes two pounds of pressure to pull this trigger. It's an insurance policy. And likely you'll never have to use it. But just in case that time does happen, you would rather have it than not. Because if you don't have it, we'll be thinking about you. R.I.P. Here we are at number nine. And this one, this gets me in trouble a lot. And it's hard to deal with. Your heart's too big. It's so hard to not let your feelings get in the way. It's so hard not to keep this strictly business. Cause you'll go out, it'll be a single mom with three kids. Her car is 30 years old, has 200,000 miles. And guess what? The water pump just went out. Part and labor is gonna run her $500 to get fixed. And she's crying because she only has $300. So she doesn't even have enough money to pay you. Even if she gave you that money she has, now she doesn't have any money to feed her kids. Well, guess what? Any decent human being is gonna feel like a piece of shit. If you're like me, there's gonna be a lot of times that you help that customer out. But guess what? Everybody has a story. Everybody out here is struggling. Everybody has no money. Everybody has struggles. She's a single mom. This woman over here, her husband just died of 50 years. The guy out back has stage four cancer. So everybody has a story. You just can't go around helping everyone because at the end of the day, this is a business. I'm not saying never help anybody. Be choosy. Like at the point where I'm at, the only people I help are elderly people. Look at CEOs of these big corporations. Or look at your boss right now. You're like, yeah, that fucking guy's a dickhead. A lot of times he has to be a dickhead. You can't let your heart run your business. You'll end up feeling good at the end of the day about helping somebody. But guess what? Your business fails. And you think that person you just helped, you think they care that your rent's behind now? They don't. They do not care. No matter what you did for them, look at me. They do not care. Look, here we are. If I haven't convinced you yet, I mean, I don't know. If you've went through all them things I just told you and you're like, yeah, that ain't so bad, I can do that, then go for it. But let me tell you the number 10 reason, right? It's a big one. It's the knowledge you have to have. You can't just be a Ford master. You can't just be a master tech in Toyota. You have to literally learn how to work on all makes and models. Toyota Tacoma, the next call is a Honda Civic. After that, there's a Kia Sportage. And then you have a Chevy Colorado, and then somebody's calling for you to work on their Polaris four-wheeler. Then your neighbor's asking you if you can fix his lawnmower. Look, I'm not a master mechanic in, on one thing, but you best believe I know a little bit about it all, because you have to. You just sit around and think, well, I'm only going to work on Fords. You better go to a Ford dealership. Most of the time, an alternator can be changed the same way on vehicles. You know, the serpentine belt's coming off, and you know there's going to be a few bolts holding it on, right? Some things like that are easy. But when it comes to diagnosing these vehicles, that's where it gets tricky. Trying to find wiring diagrams for all these different type of vehicles. All right, guys, that's the end of the video. If you still want to be a mobile mechanic after all that, well, then God bless you. But maybe I just saved you a bunch of money, a bunch of time, because you could have quit your job. You could have went out here thinking this is going to be easy, and you would have failed. At least now, if you're going to go into it, you've heard all sides of it. You've heard the good and the bad. If you guys like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do. We're trying to get to 15,000 by June, and we're only at about 12.6 thousand. So I think we're gonna fail on that, but let's keep trying. Donate to this channel, and it personally helped me and my family. I'll go ahead and have my Cash App, PayPal, and Venmo up here on the screen. Also, it'll be down in the video description as well. Any of the tools I use are down in the video description. I wasn't trying to discourage anybody. I'm doing this because I love you guys. And like we always say, Semper Fi until next time.